Okay, in our video series of cardiology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about pericarditis. We are going to talk about the presentation, the diagnosis, causes, as well as the treatment of pericarditis in detail. A 50-year-old man comes to your clinic complaining of chest pain. Patient had a viral infection, a viral flu one week back that he completely recovered from. Now he complains of chest pain. When you take the patient's history, patient tells you that doctor, my chest pain worsens when I lie down straight. But when I sit up or lean forward, my chest pain improves. It's a positional pain. Doctor, when I take a deep breath, my chest pain worsens. It's a pleuritic chest pain. You perform an ECG. And when you perform an ECG, you see diffuse ST segment elevations on the ECG associated with PR depression. This is a classical presentation of pericarditis. What is pericarditis? How do you diagnose it? How do you manage it? Today we are going to talk about that. Pericarditis is the inflammation of pericardium. What is pericardium? Pericardium is a layer of connective tissue that surrounds the heart, that covers the heart, that protects the heart. This layer of connective tissue can sometimes get inflamed and it can get inflamed resulting in the condition called as pericarditis. Pericarditis can be either acute or it can be chronic. Acute occurs within days and it is called as chronic when it is there for the three months. For more than three months if pericarditis is there that is called as a chronic pericarditis. Now what is the cause of pericarditis? Pericarditis is most commonly caused by viral infections. Remember viral infections are the most common cause of pericarditis. Coxsackie B virus is the most common viral illness that causes pericarditis. Now remember our patient had a viral flu one week back. He recovered from that infection but that virus has now infected the pericardial tissue and that pericardium is now inflamed. Therefore, it is very important to take history of any previous infection that patient was having or even during the infectious phase, I, during a viral illness patients can develop pericarditis. It can also be caused by bacterial infection like staph, strep or mycobacterial tuberculosis. It can also occur after a myocardial infarction. Remember, myocardial infarction can also result in pericarditis if it occurs 1 to 3 days after the myocardial infarction that is called as post-infarction fibrinous pericarditis. It basically occurs because the uh, pericardial tissue that is lying over the necrotic area, the place where the patient had an MI, that, place, that uh, tissue is getting necrosed and the pericardium that is lying over it gets inflamed. That is called as post-infarction fibrinous pericarditis and timing is very important because it occurs within 1 to 3 days. If pericarditis after MI occurs weeks to months later, that is called as Dressler syndrome. And Dressler syndrome is basically an autoimmune pericarditis where the immune system starts attacking the pericardium and it commonly occurs after MI, that is called as Dressler syndrome. Remember, it's the time that differentiate post-infarction peri fibrinous pericarditis from Dressler syndrome. So, MI can also result in pericarditis. It can be idiopathic where you don't even know the cause of pericarditis. Uremia in CKD patients where there is accumulation of urea in the body and that urea accumulation can result in pericarditis. Radiation can result in pericarditis. In the longer run, it can even cause constrictive pericarditis where the pericardium can get fibrosed and sclerosed and it can get very stiff resulting in constrictive pericarditis. Autoimmune conditions where the immune system attacks the pericardium can result in pericarditis. Trauma. During the surgery, there can be injury to the pericardial tissue resulting in inflammation of the pericardium. Or any neoplasm like Hodgkin's lymphoma can result in pericarditis. So, these are the common causes. But remember, viral infections are the most common cause of pericarditis. Now coming to the clinical presentation of pericarditis. Remember pericarditis presents with chest pain and it is very important in these patients that you rule out myocardial infarction in these patients because myocardial infarction can be deadly. Must do ECG in these patients and rule out myocardial infarction before making diagnosis of acute pericarditis. Remember acute pericarditis will the patient would come to you with pleuritic chest pain. Pleuritic chest pain means that when patient inhales deeply, when patient inspires deeply, that results in worsening of the pain. It will be a sharp retrosternal pain that worsens, that gets aggravated when the patient coughs, when the patient swallows and with the deep inspiration. Other than that, this pain improves on sitting or leaning forward. Therefore, most of the times these patients would won't lie down. They won't be lying down supine on the bed. They will be sitting or, or leaning forward 
to relieve this chest pain so this positional pain this pain that is pleuritic associated with deep inhalation worsened by coughing worsened by swallowing these are not the features of myocardial infarction myocardial infarction pain is not pleuritic myocardial infarction pain is not positional myocardial infarction pain does not worsen with deep inhalation or coughing so this is how you can differentiate that whether this patient is having a chest pain due to mi or a chest pain due to acute pericarditis now when you auscultate their chest you will be able to appreciate pericardial friction rub in these patients what is pericardial friction rub basically pericardium is composed of two layers the inner layer is called as visceral layer and the outer layer is called as parietal layer and whenever there is pericarditis where there is inflammation in these two layers when these two layers when these inflamed two layers rub against each other that rubbing produces friction and then friction produces a sound that sound is called as pericardial friction rub and you are able to auscultate that when you place the stethoscope on the left sternal border and it is best heard during expiration when the patient is sitting up and leaning forward that is called as pericardial friction rub this is how pericardial friction rub sounds like Now coming to the diagnosis of acute pericarditis. Remember, for the diagnosis of acute pericarditis, there is a diagnostic criteria that must be fulfilled when you are going to diagnose a patient with acute pericarditis. Two out of the four must be present. First of all, characteristic chest pain. Characteristic chest pain is pleuritic chest pain. Worsens with deep breathing. Worsens with swallowing. Worsens with a patient lying down supine and it improves when the patient sits or lean forward. That is the class classical pain pericardial friction rub on auscultation typical ecg findings what are the ecg findings i'll discuss that in the next slide new or worsening pericardial effusion remember a complication of acute pericarditis since there is inflammation going on in the pericardial layer it can produce exudative fluid and that exudative fluid accumulates around the heart that is called as pericardial effusion what is pericardial effusion? What is cardiac tamponade? I have discussed in detail in my video on pericardial effusion and tamponade. You can check out the video link in the description below. Whenever you suspect pericarditis or whenever patient comes to you with chest pain, always, always do ECG. When you perform ECG, there are certain findings that are characteristic of acute pericarditis. Acute pericarditis patient will have diffuse ST segment elevation. Diffuse ST segment elevations are not seen in a patient with MI. MI usually involves one artery and that one artery would be involving one area of the heart. And that area of the heart is represented by certain leads. Like if the inferior wall is involved, 2-3 AVF will show ST segment elevation. But in pericarditis, there is inflammation in the pericardium and that inflammation in pericardium results in diffuse ST segment elevation. All the leads will show ST segment elevation. And with the ST segment elevation, the very, very important finding is PR segment depression. The PR segment will be depressed. It is very specific for pericarditis. Many times you won't be able to see diffuse ST segment elevation. But if you see Paris PR segment depression with the clinical features, it fulfills the criteria. The two out of four criteria will be fulfilled. The patient will be having characteristic chest pain and the PR depressions are there. The ECG finding is there. This is very specific. Other findings that are seen on ECG that are less significant include absence of reciprocal leads. What is reciprocal lead? I have discussed that in detail in my video on ECG lectures on reciprocal changes. You can check out the link of ECG lecture in the description given below. I have a whole playlist of lectures on ECG where I have discussed all the rhythms, all the important ECG changes that you must know. Absence of development of Q wave. Remember, Q wave develops after a patient has an MI. The deep Q wave is seen when a patient has an MI. Since these patients are having pericarditis, they won't develop any Q wave, which is another thing in favor of pericarditis over MI. So, must remember diffuse ST segment elevation and PR segment depression. PR segment depression being very specific finding for pericarditis. Now, we will look at the ECGs. If you look at this ECG, this ECG is showing ST segment elevation. Look at the ST segment elevation in the lead. This is ST segment elevation. Look at the ST segment elevation over here. Look at the ST segment elevation over here. Look at the ST segment elevation over here. 
over here you can see the st segment elevation look at the st segment elevations there is diffuse st segment elevation in almost all leads you can see that st segment is elevated now we will look for pr segment depression now if you look at this lead i will zoom in over here we can see that in this lead if i zoom in you can see this is the p wave this is the t wave and this one is the qrs complex now where is the pr segment pr segment is here this from the end of p to the start of qrs this is pr segment and see that pr segment is depressed the pr segment is lower than the general line of ecg this is the general line of ecg and see the pr segment is depressed look at the depression of pr segment this is specific for pericarditis this is very specific for pericarditis this is another picture showing this is now the baseline ecg they have drawn the baseline of ecg uh, with this blue mark and look at the pr segment depression look at the pr segment depression look at the st segment elevation so you will see diffuse st segment elevation with pr segment depression now you should pause the video and try to solve this ecg yourself try to see the finding where are the p seg pr segment depression where the st segment elevations are now coming to the next ecg in this ecg you can easily appreciate the pr segment depressions look at the pr segment depressions in this lead look at the pr segment depression look at the pr and look at the baseline this is a typical ecg with pr segment depression over here you can see the st segment elevation over here you can see the st segment elevation over here you can see the st segment elevation and look at the pr segment look at the pr segment the pr segment is depressed and there is st segment elevation so you are finding st segment elevation in almost all the leads or in some leads with there there is pr segment depression and the four things or the two things out of the four diagnostic criteria must be fulfilled there should be either pericardial friction rub or there should be a classical chest pain of acute pericarditis that can fulfill a criteria and you make the diagnosis of acute pericarditis and it's very important that you rule out mi in these patients must do cardiac propy in these patients now when you have done the ecg and you have find out all the findings the next thing you have to do is that you have to do echo and you have to do the echocardiography to rule out any effusion to rule out any cardiac tamponade because these patients are having inflammation of the pericardium and that inflammation of pericardium can result in production of purulent fluid and that can accumulate around the heart resulting in effusion so echo is done echo is only done to rule out any pericardial effusion remember ecg is the main investigation in pericarditis echo is just done to rule out effusion now the ecg changes undergo certain changes over a period of time in the very initial stages in the first few days of acute pericarditis what you will see is that you will see pr segment depression and st segment elevation in stage 2 over the next week what you will see is that the pr segment depression will be there but the st segment elevation will not be there and st segment elevation will be normalized but another thing that you will see is that the t will wave will flatten down in stage 3 what you will see is that pr segment depression will be there and t wave inversion will take place and there will be no st segment elevation so if you see in all the stages stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 pr segment depression is constant while st segment elevation is not constant st segment elevation goes away in stage 2 and stage 3 and in stage 4 all the changes are normalized as soon as the inflammation settles down the all the changes go away now coming to the treatment of acute pericarditis in the treatment of acute pericarditis remember acute pericarditis is a self limiting condition it is caused by viral infections that cause inflammation of the pericardium and it is most likely self limited but what you can do is that since the patient is having severe pain patient is also having inflammation to soothe the pain and to soothe the inflammation what you can do is that you can give anti inflammatory drug anti inflammatory drugs like ansid aspirin is given 650 to 1000 mg per orally tds indomethacin can also be used or you can give colchicine colchicine is given in combination with nsaids or it is given alone colchicine is given in specially those patients where you cannot give nsaids like patients with ckd in ckd patients you cannot give nsaids in those patients you go for colchicine colchicine is given 0.5 mg per orally bd and a side effect very important point on usmle step 1 exams where they would ask you 
for the side effect of colchicine side side effect of colchicine is diarrhea when you start this medication remember that cases of pericarditis that are due to uremia due to ckd where there is excessive urea in the body resulting in inflammation of the pericarditis connective tissue diseases or autoimmune conditions in these condition in these very specific cases you have to consider steroids for the treatment remember you do not give steroids for the infections because that will further worsen and that will further worsen the spread of the virus or bacteria if you give steroid you give steroid only if you are sure that it is due to uremia a connective tissue disease or autoimmune disorder that is resulting in pericarditis so you consider steroid prednisone 0.25 to 0.5 mg per kg per orally od remember it's very important that if it is anything other than viral infection then you have to treat that accordingly if it is bacterial infection you have to give antibiotics if it is due to tuberculosis very common in developing countries where you have patients with tuberculosis these patients would develop this classical chest pain of pericarditis and many times patient would come to you with pericarditis and you further dig out the cause you find out that the patient is having tuberculosis you start the patient on anti tuberculous treatment if it is autoimmune you give immunosuppressants or steroids if it is due to uremia then you have to dialyze the patient and reduce the urea levels you restrict the physical activity in acute pericarditis you tell the patient to rest till the time the inflammation has resolved till the time the crp has normalized if the crp levels are normal the acute pain has gone away the inflammation has gone away only then the patient can uh, start physical activity why physical activity is restricted in these patients just because the layer around the heart is inflamed and if these patients start physical activity the heart starts to pump more and it will further worsen the inflammation and it they will stop or slow down the healing process therefore rest is advised especially in cases of pericarditis now chronic pericarditis is the one where the patient has pericarditis greater than 3 months and chronic pericarditis can result in constrictive pericarditis where the pericardium becomes stiff the pericardium becomes rigid and it does not let the heart relax i have a whole separate video on constrictive pericarditis you can check out that video on my channel the complications of pericarditis include constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade when the effusions start to develop those effusions can result put pressure on the heart resulting in cardiac tamponade i have discussed cardiac tamponade constrictive pericarditis uh, cardiac effusions in detail in my separate videos you can check those videos out on my channel before going into the summary if you liked my video please make sure to click the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other lectures on emergency medicine cardiology lectures neurology lectures the link of all those videos is given in the description below we talked about the pericarditis as inflammation of the pericardium it is most commonly caused by infections mi can also result in its other important causes it is a pleuritic pain worsened by coughing swallowing deep inspiration acute pericarditis has pericardial friction rub two out of the four must be fulfilled for the diagnosis of pericarditis must do ecg in this patient ecg will show st segment elevation and pr segment depression is very specific do echo just to rule out pericardial effusion then we discussed some ecgs and pr segment depression in the ecgs the stages of ecg changes treatment is self limiting for inflammation and pain you can use nsaids or you can give colchicine if the patient does you cannot use nsaids treatment is really self limiting it resolves all by itself nsaid can be given for pain relief or colchicine if the nsaids cannot be given diarrhea is an important side effect of colchicine cases where pericarditis is due to uremia connective tissue disease autoimmune give steroids treat according to the cause restrict physical activity chronic pericarditis can result in constrictive pericarditis and complications of pericarditis if you like my video please make sure to click the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other lectures on emergency medicine lectures cardiology ecg lectures you can also follow us uh, on instagram and support us on uh, buy me a coffee thank you very much